There's an epidemic in the enterprise, and its number is 911. That's coming up next on the E911 Talk podcast, recorded on Sunday, March 15th, 2015, right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. You're listening to the Avaya Podcast Network. Now, here's your host, Mark Fletcher. For the last decade and a half, I've tried to raise awareness about the importance of being able to dial 911 from multi-line telephone systems, also known as MLTS PBXs. These systems typically require an access code, usually a nine, to make an outside call. Now, the main purpose for this is because these systems allow stations to dial each other, and the nine is used as an indicator that the following digits are intended for the outside switched telephone network. Now, when systems were more mechanical in nature, this prefix routing digit was commonly unavoidable. However, in today's modern digital telephone systems, programmable dial plans are available that allow the system to make intelligent decisions based on the numbers dialed. So where it was impossible before, simple logic now allows an MLTS PBX to recognize the difference between internal extension numbers and outside public numbers. Now, in addition to eliminating the need to dial a prefix of 9 for any call, access to 9 can easily be programmed so that those digits alone will properly route to emergency services. Now, despite this, many people believe that, number one, it's very expensive to implement 911 services in any form on a PBX. And number two, many people believe that dialing 911 directly is something that really isn't needed as people are used to dialing an access code before making an outside call. Well, unfortunately, neither of these facts are true. The remediation of 911 on an enterprise telephone system System becomes expensive only when it's done inefficiently, using processes that are outdated, archaic, and of little value. This includes the regimented updating of the alley database, which is provided by the telephone company, with the exact location of every station. But wait a second, how will public safety know where I am without that database? Well, fortunately, the answer to that is a simple one, and one that the companies that sell maintenance to those databases don't really want you to know. You see, public safety can't help you before they arrive at the location of the emergency. Now, despite where you are in the building, the police car, the fire truck, or the ambulance can only get as close as the front door. And it's at that time that the emergency responders need explicit information about the location of the emergency and quite often someone to bring them to it. Now, that functionality is delivered through on-site notification to individuals responsible for meeting public safety or providing a display panel on the wall with that information. You see, that information already exists in the enterprise network, and that information is not subject to a monthly recurring fee to manage and maintain. Would you pay the phone company to maintain your internal employee telephone directory? Of course you wouldn't. As for direct access to 911, this is a problem. The fact of the matter is that in an emergency, people are going to react with what they've been taught. At a very young age, we're taught that the number for emergencies is 911. Legislator Rob Trotta in Suffolk County, New York, tried to dial 911 from his office telephone. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or call your operator to help you. FCC Commissioners Ajit Pai and Mike O'Reilly dialed 911 from their offices at the Federal Communications Commission headquarters. Of course, it would work there, right? We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or call your operator to help you. And just this past week, while providing testimony at the House of Delegates hearing, Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick asked the committee chairman to dial 911 from the telephone behind him. Now, I don't know what he heard, but his comment was, nothing, it doesn't work. And of course, the tragic story of Carrie Hunt's daughter in a Marshall, Texas hotel room, who tried desperately to save her mother's life, who was being murdered just a few feet away. The incident that brought forth the urgency of this problem. I tried four times, Papa, but it didn't work. Merriam-Webster defines epidemic as affecting or tending to affect a disproportionately large number of individuals within a population, community, or region at the same time and excessively prevalent. Now, based on the hard facts and circumstances presented here, I would say that this problem certainly qualifies. In 2012, Congress required the administrator of their general services to complete a report on 911 dialing from federal buildings. The deadline for that report was November 18, 2012. And to date, that report has not been produced. On March 11th, Commissioner Pai notified Denise Turner Roth, the acting administrator of the GSA, and asked her to produce that report or advise of the GSA 
ASA's plans and timeline for completing it. The commissioner asked for a response to that by March 24th. Will the epidemic continue or will Commissioner Ajit Pai earn his honorary medical degree for eliminating this disease? Dr. Pai to emergency. Dr. Pai to emergency. The 911 Talk podcast is brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. If you have any questions or comments, you could write me at FletcherM at Avaya.com. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. For the 911 Talk podcast, this is Fletch. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time right here on APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. The preceding podcast has been brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. I'm Spider Harrison, the official voice dude of APN. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Avaya underscore APN and check us out on the web at avaya.com slash APN.